Hello everyone, my name is Catherine Green. I'm a textile designer and maker. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing to my mailing list and my newsletter. And here is your free tutorial this morning uh, on how to shibori a pair of socks. Um, there are lots of different shibori techniques. It's an exciting world. Um, so I'm just introducing you a little taster of how to do one certain thing. If you're interested in doing more, um, please get in touch with me. I run lots of different workshops from printing to dyeing and I would love to hear from you. So, what I'm going to do this morning is show you how to shibori a pair of socks like this. What we start with what you will need to start this morning is you will need a pair of plain white cotton socks. The more cotton rich, the better. Synthetics don't tend to dye so well. So if you can find um, some, some good percentage of cotton socks, that's going to be the best one to use. You will also need some rubber bands. You can use thread as well, but rubber bands are quite quick and easy. Um, you will want buckets, uh, a measuring jug, a spoon to stir, uh, some salt, rubber gloves, very important if you don't want blue hands, um, and today we're going to be using Dylon dye. Um, in my studio and in my workshops I use Procyon dyes uh, which uh, have more scope for dyeing, um, but for the purposes of these, these will these will work absolutely fine for what you want to do and they're quick and easy. Um, so what you will do is you start with your plain sock. And what we're going to do is we're going to just pinch up. So you open your sock up a bit and you pinch little sections of your sock. They can be as large or small as you like. The larger the section, the bigger the bigger the circle you'll have. So you probably want to make them something like that. And so you pinch it up and secure it with your elastic band. You can see that, see what I'm doing? The key to all successful shibori is tension. It's making sure that any resist is on tightly because shibori is means really to to resist to ring to bind um, and it's it, it is anything that will resist the dye so if something is going to resist the dye it needs to be tight so that it the dye won't penetrate that area that you've selected so, carry on, pinch up another area. Like I said, you can make them, you can make them really tiny. They're more fiddly. I think if you're going to, to make them a bit smaller, just pinch the tops and maybe bind with a bit of thread. There we go. Pinch again. Carry on, and you can do as many of these as you like. I might get a bit bored and want to do something different. The lovely thing about shibori is you can explore and you can experiment because whatever you do, you're going to get something different and probably something surprising that you don't expect to have. Um, and that is part of the joy. Um, so, if you're a bit bored with that one, you can pinch a bigger bit. And if you don't put your band in the same place all the way up, so you move it up now, you see, so you've, even, you've done that bit tight and then you've moved it up, and you're going to make this next little bit tight. And what 
that doesn't need to be there. I'm just going to like put it here. See, so that sort of different, and that what that will give you, that will give you two circles, two circles of white. Another thing you can do, if you don't want to pinch any more, you can take your whole top of the sock. horizontally around the sock top. So there are lots of different things you can do and the joy of this is about playing really, having fun, experimenting, seeing what happens, exploring. Right. So you can see and you can make them quite tight. You could keep going and have lots and lots of circles in there. Um, but I think you probably get the idea from that. So I'll leave that there. One more. ready to go. Another form of shibori, something like this, which I won't show you today, but it's another another form you can do, which starts like that when it goes in the die. So again, that's something for another, another day. What you will then need is to mix up your die, and I suggest you just follow the dial on instructions on the back of the pack. They're very clear, they're very simple, but for that you will need some household salt, just normal household salt and access to warm water as well. So you mix up your dye according to the instructions, but what I will say, where it says stir to dis dissolve the dye, really stir well, um, just because you really want to dissolve those dye particles thoroughly because if you don't you'll get spotting you get little spotting on your on your scar on your um, on your socks afterwards so it's really important to stir all that up well and when you mix it together then put your socks in stir them around and then leave them again according to the to the dial on instructions when you time is up and now we're in Blue Peter Sidey here because here's one, I'll do your Smith, depending where you're coming from. Here's one I prepared earlier so that you could see the results. So, you can see my white sock is now a lovely shade of blue. So I'm going to pop it in a bucket of cold water just to rinse out the worst of the dye before I undo it. And it's good to give it a bit of a rinse before you take the resists out, because otherwise the dye might bleed back into them. So give it a bit of a rinse. And then, and this is where your sheet of plastic comes in handy, on your table, if you remember it. You can then unravel Let's see Let me see what's happening they should pull off if they don't you can always use a pair of scissors and cut them off with 
this and you can use different colours. You could dip dye the top in one colour, put it in the bottom in another colour. Like I said, let's try some things. But that is your Shibori sock. Thank you so much for signing up and, and, and tuning in to my mini tutorial here and I hope to see you again in the future. Bye.